Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. MockQ is a very popular unit testing library in the .NET ecosystem, but unfortunately, starting with the latest release, MockQ has started to tweak or play around and mess around with your personal data. And let me show you what I mean by that. So let's go to Manage NuGet Packages, and here we'll search for MockQ. And we will install this version 4.2.0, so let's install that. Now that the package is installed, the only thing that I want to do is to go here on this project and then click on Build. So when this build is completed, we notice here a very strange message, which is actually a build warning. So MockQ uses SponsorLeak to properly attribute your sponsorship with DevLoop. Please install the GitHub sponsorship app and then proceed forward. So the app built correctly, but already MockU gave us a warning that, hey, we are using some kind of library or external application to attribute or to kind of like bind you or check if you are a sponsor for this specific project. So let me go here to the sponsor leak link that was provided in the MS build warning. And here, obviously, there is a lot of information about how sponsor link works, but obviously what it does is actually check if this app is installed on your computer like when i run this so i was in this first step and then the second step is check if a user with the currently configured git email address is sponsoring the library's sponsor account so what this essentially means is that whenever i build this project and if i have this sponsor link app installed However, when it comes to this sponsor link, which is, by the way, created by the same developer or maintainer that also created MockU, the MockU library, that's actually a closed source project. And if you if we try to decompile the DLL, it is obfuscated. So we can't really see anything what this is doing. And we have to believe what the author actually tells us is doing. Some developers out there tried to to do their best to actually find out what happens. And one thing that we were able to see is that, yeah, obviously there are some processes that are obfuscated, but generally what happens is that another Git process is spawned up where it does these specific checks. And you would say, hey, this is, however, not a very big deal. But from my point of view, it is a very big deal. Because as long as you just work on your own personal projects or side projects where you are the only developer and you do everything for yourself, well, everything's okay. You just get this warning. You just install this app if you want. And then you can, well, also sponsor, obviously, the MockQ library, which I totally advise for. However, when you are working on a company or for customers where privacy and GDPR is very important, this causes a GDPR nightmare because what this sponsor leak app essentially does, it is checks your personal email address from your Git configuration and it sends it over to a DevLoops CDN where it checks if that specific address sponsors a certain library. So even if no other information is collected, this is still a GDPR violation from my point of view. First of all, because you don't get to explicitly allow an application to do this. And the second reason is you wouldn't expect from a library to do this type of checks. Also, another very important aspect that this is performing actually two different HTTP calls. It's true, they are just head requests to the CDN or to the develop server. But still, if you are in a company where basically everything is under a firewall, and if you just build this simple project that I have here, your IT department will already notice some unusual traffic. And that would create further problems in the company because, hey, why are you using a library that does such type of HTTP? HTTP requests from your application. On the other hand, I totally get the author of the library because from my point of view, the maintainers of open source projects are really heroes. They do a lot of work and the compensation for that work is usually very, very low. That's why, for instance, I totally agree with the creators of Identity Server or Image Trap libraries that have moved from a totally free license to a partially paid license. If your company earns above a certain amount, I think that's something that, well, needs to be done because they need to be compensated somehow. But just simply implementing or adding dependencies or, well, hidden processes in your library that just starts other processes and makes HTTP calls, that's, from my point of view, not the way to go because it will cause a lot of pain and problems in companies where this library is actually used. So I would like to really also get your opinion about it. So what do you think about this new release of the Mocu library that kind of like gains 
or gets your user information, your email information and checks with an external server if you are a sponsor for that library or not. Do you think this is something that is okay to be done in libraries or do you think it's something that needs to be avoided? Please leave me your comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button and the subscribe button if you are for the first time here. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.